Innovation Instruction Highlight 72nd Convention by Chelsea Dumont. This article includes four photos from the 72nd National Convention. First, a photo of the wearable device panel left to right, Enhanced Vision Director of Sales James Bailey, Army Bernal of IRA, CyberTimes CEO and co-founder Sean Tippetts, and panel moderator Bill Bowles, vision rehabilitation expert. The second photo was taken just outside the BVA exhibit hall and includes BVA member Ronald White from the New York Regional Group, Center Daniel Sanchez, son of BVA member Enrique Sanchez, pictured right. The third photo is of Jay Wu An, representative from the Mobians Company. The caption reads, Jay Wu An, representative from the Mobians Company, demonstrates a small gadget enabling improved access to smartphones and devices to BVA's National Secretary Joe McNeil in the convention exhibit hall. The fourth and final photo included is of former Interim Deputy Secretary of Veterans Affairs Scott Blackburn, pictured with Angel Reyes Figueroa, left, and Cristela Torres, right, both BVA members from Puerto Rico. The photo was taken following the BVA President's Dinner at the 72nd National Convention. The full text of the article, entitled Innovation, Instruction, Highlight 72nd National Convention, reads as follows. The Blinded Veterans Association's 72nd National Convention has come and gone for another year. This year's capstone event can be summed up in three words, advocacy, education, support. Each component of this year's convention centered on those three takeaways. From the education sessions and the exhibit hall to legislative updates and field service claims, the BVA staff worked hard to serve each need of our veterans, their spouses, and their caregivers. The Hyatt Regency Jacksonville Riverfront provided an excellent venue as attendees experienced more than 55 exhibitors, remarks from local and national dignitaries, and even the occasional glimpse of a dolphin on the St. John's River just outside. On Monday and Tuesday of the convention week, attendees were invited to attend an unprecedented number of education sessions. A basic and advanced skills course was offered on the Victor Reader Stream device, allowing attendees to gain hands-on experience with the device in small working groups. For those who were interested in service dogs, Southeastern Guide Dogs provided an education session outlining its program and then answering questions. Also on site was a representative from the Small Business Administration who explained all of the opportunities open to veterans who may already have a small business or who are interested in starting one. Monday wrapped up with exhibitor demonstrations by Crawford Technologies demonstrating their voice eye application and a wearable devices panel featuring CyberTimes, Enhanced Vision, and the IRA device. While fighting off the rain on Monday evening, 40 convention attendees enjoyed a baseball game between the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp and the Mississippi Braves. While the home team lost the game by a large margin, attendees enjoyed the ballpark and even snapped a couple of photos with the Jacksonville Jumbo Shrimp mascot, Scampy. Tuesday sessions focused on regional group development with officer training, regional group fundraising, and a session led by the BVA Director of Government Relations. The latter focused on grassroots legislation and what a veteran can do in his or her area to make an impact. A representative from Florida Disaster was also on site to provide an education session on what to do in a disaster, followed by a session on deaf-blind communication led by BVA member and Helen Keller National Center Rehabilitation Specialist Mark Armstrong. Adding to the events, the exhibit hall at the 72nd National Convention was filled to capacity with more than 60 booths. A total of 14 new companies were featured along with exhibit hall sponsors LS&S, LLC, Orcam, VFO Group, Inclusite, Mobiance, and Esite. Several governmental agencies were on site, including the Social Security Administration, National Library Service, the National Cemetery Administration, Vision Center of Excellence, Hearing Center of Excellence, VA Office of Research and Development, and the Bureau of Engraving and Printing. Fortuitous were the simultaneous meetings of VA Blind Rehabilitation Service personnel who also profited from the exhibit hall located directly outside their main meeting room. Tuesday evening wrapped up with the annual President's Reception sponsored by IRA, Envision America, and National Industries for the Blind. BVA attendees were joined by the Interim Deputy Secretary of Veterans Affairs, Mr. Scott Blackburn, who provided encouraging remarks on the state of the Department of Veterans Affairs and graciously met with individual veterans after the dinner. 
Wednesday morning opened with the 2017 opening session and a video from VA Secretary Dr. David Shulkin. Attendees were also joined by local Congressman John Rutherford, who spoke of his dedication to public service and our nation's veterans. The Director of Military Affairs and Veterans Department in Jacksonville, Mr. Bill Spann, joined the opening session on behalf of Jacksonville Mayor Lenny Curry, as well as Michelle Barth, the latter of whom provided remarks on behalf of Senator Bill Nelson. Feeling charged to advocate for the organization, BVA members delved into business meetings followed in the evening with small focus groups for women veterans and a guide dog users group. Education led the way on Thursday morning with the BVA Forum. VA Director of Optometry Service, Dr. John Townsend, kicked off the event, followed by a very in-depth question-and-answer session with Gail Watson from VA Blind Rehabilitation Service. Also on site was Dr. Mosley Sheikh, Section Chief of the Department of Ophthalmology and Optometry with the Orlando VA Medical Center. Tim Doherty from the Veterans Health Administration and Winston-Salem, North Carolina VIS coordinator David Hedrick rounded out the presentations. The standout on Thursday, however, was Michael Hudson of the American Printing House for the Blind as the keynote speaker for the Father Carroll Luncheon. Remarks by Mr. Hudson were moving, to say the least, and even BVA National President Dale Stamper claimed to be left speechless. At a time of change in the nation, Mr. Hudson provided a direction and motivation through the words of Father Thomas Carroll himself from a speech he gave at the Father Carroll Luncheon in 1969. Nearing the end of a decade of turmoil, Father Carroll boasted his words of anger and despair, of confusion and bewilderment, and called for a movement to end the fighting, end the hate, and find within ourselves a commonality and will for the common good. It was these words that Mike Hudson shared with attendees, and these words that speak to us in the same manner nearly 40 years later. At the Father Carroll Luncheon, BVA also presented Certificates of Appreciation for Extraordinary Service to Evelyn Cabrera Heatwall, Visual Impairment Services Team Coordinator at the Hunter Holmes McGuire VA Medical Center in Richmond, Virginia, and Kelly Golden, Blind Rehabilitation Outpatient Specialist at the Mann Grandstaffed VA Medical Center in Spokane, Washington. Feeling charged with a motion from Thursday afternoon, BVA members opened Friday morning with the closing business meeting where a new board of directors was elected. Joe Parker, U.S. Navy retired, was voted in as the 41st BVA national president since the organization's founding in 1945. Joe will join Vice President Paul Mims, Secretary Joe McNeil, and Treasurer Daniel Wallace as the organization's national officers for the coming year. Other highlights of an exceptionally long closing business meeting was the passage by delegates and attendees of 21 resolutions or items of concern to BVA that affect the blind and visually impaired within local government jurisdictions, within the National Office of VA's Blind Rehabilitation Service, or because of an act of Congress. After a long week, several attendees took a guided tour of the Anheuser-Busch factory in Jacksonville. Those on the brewery tour experienced the aroma and heat that goes into making the craft beer while getting to sample them at the end. Friday evening closed with a BVA Awards banquet where the winners of the Melvin J. Moss, Irving Diener, and David L. Schneer Award were announced and new board members sworn in. Kenan Ken Horn of the Oklahoma Regional Group received BVA's highest honor for 2017, the Melvin J. Moss Award for Professional Achievement. The Irving Diener Award, which recognizes individual contribution to a BVA regional group or the national organization, went to Leonard Pope of the New Jersey Regional Group. Dennis O'Connell, New York Regional Group, received the David Schneer Award for Outstanding Service as a BVA Volunteer. Regional Group Gold, Silver, and Bronze Gavel Awards were presented to the Rocky Mountain, Emerald Coast, and Florida Regional Groups, respectively. The gold gavel recognizes the group with the greatest numerical increase, the silver the largest percentage increase, and the bronze the greatest increase in numbers of members who have become active after having been designated as inactive. Although the heat was up on the last day of the convention due to a power outage in the area, literally and figuratively all attendees once enjoyed the camaraderie of longtime friends and new acquaintances. The BVA convention staff would personally like to thank all of those in attendance at the 72nd National Convention. A special thanks to Marjorie Beeman as one who performs the tasks of many, from coordinator of volunteers at the airport to those on site within the hotel. Our convention would not be possible without her efforts.
Thank you also to the volunteers who joined us on site and who took the time to care for and connect with our veterans and their families. To all of the sponsors and exhibitors, we thank you for sharing your knowledge and expertise with our attendees and hope that you will continue to support the mission of the Blinded Veterans Association to leave no blinded veteran behind. Last, but certainly not least, a particular thank you to all of the veterans for your service and dedication to the organization. A convention is not possible without attendees. With your support and feedback, we can continue to improve and meet the needs of our blinded veterans. We hope that you will join us next year for our 73rd National Convention. The location and information will be released to all members as soon as it becomes available.